Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very excited to kind of go over my build of the Polar Lights 1350 scale Katinga Klingon Battle Cruiser. Uh, it's a wonderful kit made by Polar Lights and it's going to be re released in November of this year. They've really made a big effort to make a very accurate and great model for us. Uh, you can see here some of the paint instructions they've given us, and they've given it to us in all the different brands. They've given us a resin bridge filled with detail, and the paneling of the kit is raised. These aren't just engraved panel lines. They've actually kind of given this great 3D sculpt to all of the panels throughout this ship. Uh, really looks wonderful. The molding on this kit is fantastic. You'll see tons of details here, and as we kind of zoom in on a few of these pictures, you're going to see wonderful cutouts for the windows. And here's a little penny for scale. But you can see around the bulb, they have really made tiny windows. Little tiny bits of flash still in them, um, but fantastic. They've also given you photo etch in the lighting kit to kind of give it a little bit more distinction. But you can see all the parts and all the greeblies that are on available for this kit. Overall, it's big. Here it is compared to the 1/350th scale Klingon Bird of Prey. One thing that I did is I opened up the windows. Those are going to be covered up by photo etch to give them the right size and shape. So I really opened up the plastic parts windows to let a lot of light shine through. What I want to show here is there aren't any locator pins for a lot of parts. Beveled edges and the parts just sit together to be glued. Great little standoffs throughout the kit to hold the LEDs. You can see four standoffs in this picture, and here you can see a couple standoffs with LEDs in the bottom of the bulb to port towards the front. Here's kind of the top of that bulb with all four LEDs put in, and one LED is pointed up towards the bridge. You want to scuff up some of those classic parts to kind of diffuse the light, but here you can see those lights inside lighting up the cobra head and the bulb. Here it is with the plastic. Remember, those windows are oversized. The photo etch will clean that up. Here's the photo etch. You can see there are bands to go across all of those bridge windows to give them that great rectangular shape. Here's another example of parts without locator pins. This part's simply going to fit kind of up against a flat surface on the on the neck and be glued in. Same thing with this detail piece. Uh, it's just going to fit in that very light indentation you can see, and just a little bit of extra thin cement will hold them together. Wonderful kind of simplistic design for the nacelle, uh, just five or six pieces there, and a light pipe. That LED actually will shine through that pipe and light five different points of light on three sides of the nacelle. Really ingenious way they did that. Coming up are some pictures of the cargo bay and the radiator housing of the ship. Um, you can see you have to do a little bit of a cut so you can pre-paint that part before installing the red lens. You can pre-paint that kind of comb. Uh, here is the LEDs on the radiator fins. You want to make sure you put the bulb through before you close it up. You won't be able to fit that connector through otherwise. So kind of this sub-assembly for the radiator and the cargo bay. All completed. And of course, with the lights turned on, you can kind of see that nice red glow. And of course, I'm using the stock lighting kit from Polar Lights. Uh, nothing I built myself. This is the way it comes out of the box. Here's the engine assembly. You can see a little bit of cleanup there, a little bit of mold residue to remove, and kind of the part breakdown for that engine. Now, the engine actually had oversized holes. Those are three millimeter bulbs and five millimeter holes. So you'll have to make a little correction there yourself. You're also going to have to change the tint of those bulbs. They came out kind of purple. Nothing a little red clear paint won't fix. So I did a little bit of plastic sheeting with a smaller hole to hold that light bulb and just glued it to the back. Now here's something I want to pre-paint a little bit so I could do it without the neck. Um, and I'm using all of the box suggested paints. I wanted this review to really show you what you end up with when you build it per the instructions, including the paint instructions. Might be a little more green than we're used to in a lot of the uh, shots that made it to the movie, but this is what the studio model looked like on the first day of filming. 
once again, the box art has some wonderful color callouts and kind of pictures all around it to show you what to do. Here I am kind of painting. I've masked off the parts where that photo watch is going to lie so that I can glue it onto some uh, bare plastic. And I've also masked off a few parts here that need to be a little lighter than some of the others. And here we are installing the photo watch. And these are by the kit instructions. Tack down one side, then kind of bend it around. For this part, tack it down in the middle and bend it along both sides. Here's just a little shot of it uh, being glued in place and a shot of it lit up. All right, so it's pretty easy to build in sub-assemblies. You've got a sub-assembly for the head and neck, the nacelles, the engine, and that cargo bay. After that, you've got the two main hull halves. You've got a few lights to install on those. Um, I sprayed them with silver to really kind of help diffuse some of the light. And then before you mate them together, put the nacelles on. Now you can see that great little angle, how those nacelles are slightly tilted in the way that it should be on the Katinga. Now, as you get ready to put the engines on, you've got to bend the leads on that LED. And that little hole is where all of the wires are going to go into. So when you glue those halves, pull all the lights out the back, glue those halves down, then stick it in that hole into that battery compartment. So all the lights are coming in from that side. Leave the engine decking off for a little bit so you can pull the slack out of those wires in a little bit. Now you can stick the um, cords in from the, from the head and the neck. And the head and neck is super strong. You can see it's got these three snap connectors. You're going to push through. And those two holes together, there are actually two layers of hole plastic there that they snap through. But it is a secure neck. After that, you've got one LED to put down in the middle underneath that battery compartment and two to put in that are going to be kind of floodlights shining down on the wings of that uh, Katinga battle cruiser. So now you can kind of see an idea of what the battery compartment is going to look like. That battery pack is going to slide right down there in the middle. And then you've got the circuit board kind of pointing towards the back. Uh, to, to mask the lights, I used a little bit of this rubbery GO2 glue. I just applied it with the toothpick to allow those round lights. And then after you paint, you can either just pick that off with some tweezers or even sometimes roll it off with your finger. Uh, laying down some of the paint. This is kind of that neutral brownish gray color paint that I did first. Um, I had to mask off some of the green that I previously painted. I just started with the largest surfaces and then start moving on to the smaller ones. And here you can see kind of that main green base coat has been applied. Now the colors they suggest you use are very similar. There's not too much differentiation. Here I use a little bit of rubber shrink tubing to kind of just plug in that hole to kind of mask it off as I painted. And now they're real fun, kind of putting a lot of the different colors on. Here we are masking off um, for some of the NATO black, a very, very dark gray color used in a lot of parts of the kit. Then masking off for kind of the lighter tan colors. I think this was Tamiya Buff. Um, and more NATO black along the back. Then one of the more complex parts of masking it off was this radiator assembly. Lots of different buff and dark iron colors along with the NATO black. A couple different shades of dark green on this. Uh, but it really does work out well. Now in a lot of these pictures, these contrasting colors are a real strong contrast up until you do a wash. So there you can see those colors really are a striking contrast. That will be cleaned up by the time we start doing a wash. And here's the battery pack. I've glued down that one cover in the front. The battery pack slides in. This part you don't glue in. It just kind of snaps and friction fits in. So you can take that on and off to get to that battery's on and off switch. So now we've got the base colors painted. The lights have been assembled. And now it's time to start doing some detail work. I'm using a little bit of Tamiya weathering to kind of hit some of these spots. And if you got the lighting kit, you will also have brass photo etch pieces. You can see the brass photo etch really does 
uh, scale better and have more detail than the plastic parts. The plastic parts ended up being a little oversized and a little bit simplified. So if you get the lighting kit, you also get those wonderful brass pieces. Those are some greeblies kind of for the part where the neck meets the bulkhead of the ship. I'm not the best at using PhotoWatch. I hardly ever use it, but I do like the results that it gives you being able to use those on this. So once again, a little more green than you might expect. Um, but that is kind of the kit instructions. And there's kind of an example. Those are the three shades of green they want you to use, and there's not much differentiation at all. There's that buff and... Um, kind of dark iron color. So what I did when I started doing this pattern is I lightened up the lightest green color, knowing I was going to cut down that contrast through weathering it a little bit later. So as I lay down these first feather-like patterns, um, you'll see that they're a real sharp contrast. I'm going to overspray it with the base color uh, to kind of bring them more together and kind of merge them all together. After that, a dark wash will really kind of unite them but lots of masking, just a couple days of just masking off different panels. Lots of different shades of green. The darker shades, I went with the kit instructions, just the lightest ones I lightened. And here you can see what it looks like after a shot or two of the base coat kind of over it. Here's kind of a shot with really light down the front, so you can see all the wonderful detail brought out by a little bit of a wash. And here's that resin bridge that they provided for us. Compared to the plastic piece, um, just the, the detail, there's, it's night and day. Definitely use a resin piece if you can. After all the painting, it's down to the decals. And uh, they react wonderfully to decal solutions. You'll be able to see how the decal solutions really make them conform to the hull. And that large Klingon insignia, about four different decals that go over different parts of it to kind of make that one large insignia. So here's that bulb after some decal set has been put on it. And you can see no wrinkles, adheres perfectly to that wonderful curve. You'll be able to see the panel lines under that decal. Those decals sunk into the panel lines of the ship with that setting solution. It's wonderful. Top is the studio model. Bottom is my picture. Studio model might lean a little bit more blue. And here are some final pictures of my model. Uh, big thanks to round two for letting me build a test kit of this. Um, I had a wonderful time building it. Fantastically fun model. No need to really use any putty. No need to alter things to get them to fit. Really just plug and play. Stock lighting kits. Um, stock colors, and it is a great looking model. Really very few light leaks that you'd have to clean up. Um, fantastic, fun kit, super accurate. I really can't say enough good things about it. So if you have a chance, pick up the model kit, pick up the lighting kit, uh, so you're not worrying about soldering anything, you're not worried about planning on your lights, they have it all covered. Spotlights on the hull, blinking strobes on the neck and the belly, uh, engine lights, torpedo lights. It really has everything. And I think it's fantastic they provided photo etch uh, to kind of give us those wonderful shapes uh, for the windows and to add us those extra details to the head and the neck of the ship. Thank you all for watching. Um, I hope this gave you an idea of what the model kit will kind of be like and what you can do with it. And once again, I'm sure more people are going to build really fantastic, incredible models that go way above mine. Uh, this build was really to show you an out-of-the-box build that the average modeler can do. And if you like it, I'm glad. Thank you.